I, I don't know about the, the players. I mean, obviously, LB just uh, losing his personality hurts us. You know, um, he's just one of those, you know, as I've said it a million times, but you don't know a player or a coach or anybody until you actually coach him or play with him. And uh, he's one of those guys who just like in your locker room, forget the basketball part. And uh, his spirit has been really good for us. And losing that, uh, that's, that's big. And then he was our wild card. You know, it was good to have a wild card. You know, when you throw him in and, um, it, you know, he could go either way. But he knew he was going to be aggressive. So it's a loss. As far as players, you know, Dan and I, the last 48 hours, have probably covered every human being that's breathing and can dribble and shoot. And, uh, you know, we're just going to take our time. That was at the end of the day today. That's basically what we came to. Is we, we don't want to rush into anything. We don't have a lot of flexibility cap wise. So we're just going to wait. And if someone shakes loose or you can get someone, we will. Uh, but until then, you know, our uh, we're, we're stretched at the guard spot. Doc, so you don't Would expect by like both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I would. I'm not going to say we will. Uh, we're, we're going to be very patient. You know, there's no reason to just go grab a guy. Um, we're going to wait. And uh, one of the things I told Danny at the end of the day for us, let's not look at a position anymore. You know, that's something we were doing. And from now on, right now, with the, all the injuries, well, whoever's out there who we think is the best player, no matter what position, uh, we'll just get them and then figure out how to use them. Uh, even if it's another guy that a three, you know, where we don't need, I say we'll just move, we'll move it around and play three threes if we have to. But I would rather have the best player than a positional player. So you can move three guards. I have no or three or three small forwards. You know, whatever we have, we have. Uh, I would just like him to be a good player. You don't have three centers. No three centers. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Doc, we've seen Rondo hanging around here. Um, you don't expect Barbosa to stick around? Yeah, I do, but it's different. You know, as I've told you before, you, it's different when you're playing and then when you're not playing. You know, players tend to listen more to the guy that's out on the floor with them. Uh, but, yeah, I, I would like, I actually told LB, you know, I like our guys hanging around, and, but I do understand, and, you know, Rose went through it and is going through it. It's tough to be there every day when you can't play and you want to play. That's hard, uh, and I don't expect that for him. Uh, I know he'll probably slip off to Rio uh, <laughs> at some point. Is he a guy that you would like to have back on yeah, the team? Yeah, absolutely. Doc, that's the second locker room guy that you've lost with Jared. How much do people on the outside underestimate that aspect of a player rather than just their on-court? Well, I think uh, all of them are good. And I, I just think when you lose players, it hurts. But, uh, you know, locker room is a very underrated thing, you know. Uh, um, and, you know, I always use the Chuck Day line. He, he always said, I don't know how you get chemistry, but I know when you get it, you know it, and you do whatever you can to protect it and keep it, you know. Um, and, you know, so those, those hurt you. Doc, going back to the roster additions, how, again, you guys are in a tough spot cap-wise. How tough is that making now, flexibility-wise, yeah. as well as any more injuries? Like, you guys well, have we very can't, we, can't, <laughs> we literally can't have another one. So if someone gets hurt, they can't get hurt. You know, <laughs> uh, we have to ignore it. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we were very aggressive this summer, and uh, now, you know, we are really right at the threshold. So we're, it's, uh, we don't have flexibility, and that, uh, that hurts you. Is that something, again, the injury exception deadline has passed? Is that something you like to see changed in the sense of yeah. situations like this? Yeah, where you have I, I've always. But, it's you know, listen, the league is really hard on and I, Like I told you before, I, I had the one year with Grant Hill that he didn't get an injury exception. He didn't play the whole year. And that the, I guess in a comment he made that it, there's a chance he could play at the end of the year, <clears throat> made it so they didn't give us the exception. So it's not like they're giving that exception. I wish they would more. Uh, in, in circumstances like this. You guys have been very careful about the development of Fab Mello all mm -hmm. season long. With all the injuries, Doc, does that change at all? Or? No, players play when they're ready. You know, that'll never change. You know, uh, if Fab was ready, he'd be playing. It, uh, I don't think we, or any organization for the most part, anybody coddles guys. You know, they put the guys on the floor who they think are ready. If guys aren't on the floor, and that doesn't mean we're right or wrong in our decision making, but we feel like now they're not ready yet. Were you kind of playing one up, uh, trying to top Tom at dinner last night with injuries, saying, "Well, we have this yeah, guy. We, out. Well, we got this yeah, guy out. We could have had a battleship, you know. <laughs> uh, well, he's out. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we didn't. Just, we, I don't think we talked about injuries at all. Maybe we don't want to talk about it. So um, we 
talked a lot about football. Rhino underwent <laughs> surgery. <laughs> Rhino underwent surgery yesterday. Have you communicated with him at all? Not yet. I just text, but uh, I haven't talked to him yet. So, you know, I'm from the generation. I think communication is when you actually talk to a person. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I haven't talked to him yet. He's been very adamant about you know, Adrian, big fan of Adrian Pierce. He wants to yeah. follow the same concepts, everything like that. Adrian himself has said, you know, everybody's different, that kind of thing. Mm. Considering how competitive Rondo is, do you almost want to tell him, hey, you know, take your time, don't rush it? No, I want him to rush it. I want him to be exactly like Adrian Pierce. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't mean you're going to make it back, but I think it's a good thing. It's a good goal to have. Uh, I think Adrian Peterson has probably messed everyone's minds up. You know, um, yeah, everyone thinks they're going to come back and be Adrian Peterson. Uh, first of all, it's a different game. You know, and I know football there's hitting and cutting, but you're running on a hardwood floor, and every step you make is a cut uh, in basketball. And so, yeah, I think uh, you have to be very careful uh, in in that. And you know. Um, I think in basketball, guys come back, but I think it takes a little longer to, to feel comfortable. So, uh, but I do think it's uh, you know guys are far advanced. You know, I've seen Rose run up and down the floor, um, but I just think it's different, and you have to be very careful. Doc, which is a tougher challenge uh, when you're coming back from that type of injury: the the physical hurdles or the mental ones? Well, for me, it was mental, uh, but you know, the physical part I think is just. I always looked at it when I did the rehab, it was just what it was. The only way you're going to come back is going to be, you got to go through physical pain. And, uh, but the mental part, you know, for me was hard. Uh, and I didn't anticipate that. I thought it'd be easy. And you know, I remember Riley bringing me in, showing me a clips of me landing when I first came back. And I wouldn't land, I was laying on one leg. I would not land on both feet because that's how I got injured. So you know, I didn't know I was doing that. That was subconscious. But uh, I think it's mental. What's your... Do you have any theory about why somebody was so prevalent? Oh, the injury? You know, so I don't know. That's a good question. Um, that's a good question. I don't know that. I mean, we, we do more cutting. We also are off our feet more. You know, uh, Stockton, who missed what one game, I remember talking to him after his career, and I said, man, you have one hell of a career without getting injured. The way He was a physical player, and he said, I made a conscious choice not to leave my feet. And he said earlier, I think early in his, he said his rookie year, he sprained his ankle because he tried to jump high, which he said, I made a conscious effort from that point on. I'm going to try to play below the rim and uh, and, and not play, be a vertical. What did he say? I wanted to be a horizontal player instead of a vertical player. Uh, and I think a lot of those guys who are getting injured are explosive jumpers or whatever. But Sam, it's definitely more guards, um, and I don't know why. Do you ever remember in this short of time, 18 months, so many guys having no, no, and you know, there's all theories about that. You know, all this, this strength and conditioning and all that. You know, your body can only have so much weight, and I don't know the reason. I really don't. But that it, um, it's something that needs to be, you know, discussed amongst the teams uh, if and find out if we're doing something right. If Doc, they, every win's important, obviously. But how big is tonight? You know, heading into the All Star break, just going forward with the makeup of this team. Well, it's nice. I mean, especially we're going on a hard trip. Right. Uh, we're going a five-game West Coast trip after this game, uh, so it's a big game. But it, it is for them as well. So you know, um, we're going to put uh, what we can into it. Um, I, I got some guys banged up besides the guys, um, and and some of them are key guys. So. Uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, minute-wise, we're going to have some guys on restriction in this game that are key, and that's just the way it is. Speak season, Pierce said that. You'll find, you'll figure it out at the end of the game. <laughs> Pierce said the two tonight a little bit. Are you guys expecting to go big at all? Or are yeah, you well, we have no choice. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't who, I care who you call the two, uh, either Paul or Jeff, but they have to play together every game now until we get another guard. Same yeah. starters? Yeah. Doc, as uh, Jordan turns 50 this Sunday, do you have a favorite memory or anecdote or nightmare that stands out? Well, I have a lot of nightmares. <laughs> um, you know, some good ones. I um, remember uh, his sister singing the national anthem and starts laughing, and then I had to go guard him. That wasn't uh, very nice of John Starks. Uh, you know, I remember the, the thing I, I love about him, I remember the most about him, though, is the uh, uh, halftime speech of the All Star game. Um, I think Barkley was laughing. A couple guys were joking around, and he basically informed us that we were going to win the game, and uh, whoever didn't feel like playing that way should not play in the second half. And I actually like that. I wish they all were like that.